Dr. Sammy Hagar here. Now we are on another rock and roll road trip. This week, we happen to be in Austin, Texas. That's where my wife's from. Woo, kind of makes me a Texan now, don't it? We're at South by Southwest. And this is the music event in America. This covers everything. Bands, young bands from all over the country come here to be discovered. I mean, you can't walk down the street. Every club you see, there's a band in there playing, and they're awesome. Bands like Alabama Shakes, Amy Winehouse, John Mayer, Katy Perry, they've been, all been discovered here. I wasn't discovered here, but I might be discovered tonight. Huh? Huh? Okay, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do an interview for an audience, and I'm going to explain how I got my start in music and how I got where I am, wherever that is. I know right now we're on Access TV. Boom! <laughs> then I'm going to go and see my buddy Daryl, okay? From Run DMC. We're talking about Daryl. I'm gonna go interview him. He's gonna show me how to rap. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And then we're gonna rock. I'm gonna show him how to rock. We're gonna do this thing. This is gonna be the best show ever. Every year, over 51,000 people come to Austin for the world's largest music festival of its kind. For 30 years, this has been the place to hear music's elite speak. You know, they've had speakers like Dave Grohl, Robert Plant, Johnny Cash, Garth Brooks, and now, the Red Rocker himself, me. Let's do this. When did you know you had a passion for music? Probably when I was about four years old. My, um, I had big sisters from the 50s. You know, they were listening to Elvis and, and Buddy Holly, and you know, they were 50s people. So um, I kind of had a gift for lyrics. I just liked it. It felt good and felt natural. You built a career, you know, of, of gold and platinum selling albums. I'm sure there's some musicians out there that would take some advice from you. What would you tell them? Wow. One of the reasons I came here and wanted to come here and do this and all this stuff is because I really wanted to see what's going on out there, you know, what, what music is out there, because it's so difficult. It's hard to get a record company behind you. But I would say social media is your avenue right now. But the problem is, is you got to use such a crazy-ass gimmick you know, to get noticed amongst all the other things that sometimes it's not really uh, flattering to your career. Now Rogers spoke here yesterday and he said, Spotify sent him a message and said, uh, you're up to three billion now. And then he joked and said, so I guess that means I'm getting a royalty check for 25 bucks in the mail sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, your work ethic and the way you've uh, spoken here today is he said it was, he wasn't really doing it for the money, he was doing it to touch the three billion souls. I love to play live. You know, it's like, to me, that's kind of where I started. It's where I want to do for my whole life, be able to play live. It's special. But to make music, I like chicken foot. And we just go out and we just make music. We, we don't even consider what the pulse is out there or what people are ex buying or what they want us to do or trying to get a hit, you know. We don't think that way at all. So it's purely a labor of love. Hey, Okay, now that was that. You know, I went home my whole life story there, and in five minutes, I mean, in an hour, and now I'm gonna head around the corner and go meet my buddy Daryl, and we're gonna, I'm gonna do something I've never done in my life. I'm gonna try to rap. I am, and I know he can rock. So, let's check this out. This is good. This is what we're here for. <laughs> We are in Austin, Texas. We are at South by Southwest, and I'm sitting here with Daryl MC Daniels. Okay, How you doing? What's come going on, on, Run DMC. In you guys started all this. You guys? Well, no, no, we didn't really start it. You guys well, actually started well, it. You rock and roll guys, all of you guys gave us the foundation and the backbeats and the music for us to rap over. You turned it all upside down and every which way. Mm -hmm. What were you listening to before you, well, you know, uh -huh. rap? I mean, you, so you were listening to I'm, rap. No, 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 no. My story's funny. When I was a little kid growing up in Hollis, Queens, New York, it's a lower suburban class uh, area, Hollis, Queens, and radio back then was beautiful. There was a station, 77 WABC, and I think one of the jocks was Dan Ingram, and I never knew it said <laughs> Dan Ingram. I just remember that, but they used to play Jackson 5, I used to play James Brown, Sly and Family Stones. As a little kid, I never cared nothing about afros, high heels, and soul music. It was something about Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, Harry wow. Chapin, 
um, 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 Procol Harum. Procol Harum, um, my favorite band Yeah, of yeah, all time. yeah, yeah. It was just something about the so-called classic rock, the, re the real rock and roll, and also the folk rock artists that captivated me as a little kid. Um, Credence Clearwater Revival, John Fogarty, all of that music as a little kid, me sitting there playing with my G.I. Joes and toys. You know, James Brown was cool, um, Sly and the Jackson 5 was cool, but it was just something about the sound of rock music. I think You're it was the guitars, me, I think it was the drums. Even Elton me, John. John, it was like, who is this guy playing the piano ah. making rock and roll? So as a kid, I always wanted to be a rock star. That's why when I started rapping, we made the song King of Rock. What a trip. I mean, you were the first guys to do it, to cross into the Bring the Rock thing and mm -hmm. into MTV and cross mm -hmm. the rap thing over to, you know, us rocker guys and right, all that. Right, right. We're going, huh? Think about it like this. I mean, it, 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 it works now and even back then. We was exposing your guys' music to totally. a whole new order. Mick Jagger! You know what I'm saying? The Rolling Stones and, 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 and Van Halen. We wanted to be where you guys were. Oh, man, well, we were That's having a good we time. I got to tell you, well, you pretty much brought Aerosmith back into the fold. I mean, no, not well, that they, they weren't right, done. Right, right, they weren't right, right, done right. by any means, but they you put them, elevated Every, them to a whole other level with that, with that song. Yeah, I mean, that was incredible. Well, it worked both ways. It worked, the, the beautiful thing about that was when we originally was going to do Walk This Way, we learned to record. We had never heard the lyrics because Jam Master J would never let the record play that far. So we went in the basement, and some of you young people out there, we put the needle on the record, and we had to let the record play. And it's like, and then Steve's voice came on, and me and Ren was like, oh, hell no! We're not doing this! This is, this is, this is folk rock country bumpkin mountain music! You're trying to, you're weird us, but with a little, oh, with, with a little emphasis to convince me and run to, because Jay, you know what's funny? Jay had said to us, he says, calm down, guys, calm down, because I want to talk about me. I'm DMC, the place to be, the best MC in history. There will never be an MC better than me. Jay had to convince, he said, stop, stop, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Steve. Listen to his flow. He's rapping. Yeah. And when you think it, you guys yeah, were already no, but, rapping. But not me necessarily, but no, that song yeah. was a good example. Backseat, Steve's lover, lyrics were always cover. real yeah, rhythmical. It was a cadence, real, yeah. right. So the dink, the dink, the dink. But the thing that, that I've I always wondered about hip hop mm -hmm. is like, as a lyricist and stuff, do you guys sit and write the lyrics and, and go through them and change them, or do you just let that shit go? How, how is it? It's, it's both. I get the it's, feeling that it, sometimes it, it's just no, it's, like no, it's both. not even it, thought about. Right? No, no, it's both. The majority of the songs is just saying what you feel, whatever. But a lot of songs such as It's Like That and That's The Way It Is, My Adidas, those songs was, we sat down and wrote were written out like a okay, song, right. like, or change that verse D, don't say that, this, it. Like but, the rockers do, that's what we have yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, 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 well, to answer your question, no, we <laughs> sit down and write songs. Yeah. We sit down and write songs. Like, the whole Adidas idea came about because um, when I was growing up, we had this doctor in our neighborhood named Dr. D's, and he was very influential. You remember this too, look at this. Thing. Yeah, 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 and every, <laughs> it was a rite of passage for every parent to drive you by Dr. D's house and say, see that house? You see that car? That's what you get when you go to school and get a good education. You little okay. So Dr. Dees was looked up to. He would write these bu newsletter bulletins. And you know, it would address obesity, food, drug abuse. One week, his newsletter was felon shoes. And he, he was partially right, but he's kind of wrong. He said, you see those young people in front of the stores with their fresh sneakers on? Those are the problems of our neighborhood. Now, he was probably right, because the first thing you would do if you sold some drugs is go get some new sneakers. Right. But I took it personally, because I was like, yeah, I wear Adidas, but I'm, I'm a student at St. John's University. My friend over there, he wears Adidas. He worked three jobs just to get one pair of sneakers. So when we went to write the Adidas songs, we had to write a song about it. So my thing was, at that time, my experience was, I stepped on stage at my Adidas, walked through concert doors, and roamed all over Coliseum floors. I stepped on stage at at Live Aid, all the people gave, and the poor got paid, uh, and out of speakers, I hey, can speak. Good God. I wore my sneakers, but I'm not a sneak, uh. so we wrote songs. <laughs> these are mine, we first of all. Okay, yeah, yeah those are definitely I had them go out and reach out for these, but so what was yeah. that? So how in the hell did you come up with the idea of just doing this shit? I mean, no, on, it's simple. Is, no, no, no. This I, is I, like a you. fad. I mean, right? right, right, right no, no, no. I'll tell you how you it came You took all about. the laces out? No. What do you got to do? You were so happy. Yeah, you took, yeah, take this, you take yeah. the no shoestrings in them, did not win them, okay. brought them off the ad with my black lead denim. But the reason, <laughs> the reason why we took the laces out was this. It was a little kid um, inspirational thing. You were so happy to get a new pair of sneakers 
You would go in the new the store with the old ones on, pull these out the box. You didn't have time to lace them up because you wanted to get them on your feet so bad. Oh, you brother. would leave the old ones on. You could put those in the box, and you would walk out the store without lacing your shoes up. Dear, I was poor, but I laced my shoes up. <laughs> but my mama slapped the shit out of me if That's I didn't. Right. I don't know. We were so happy. We didn't wow. want to take time. And so, and you, you see how long that took? Look at that. And you, now, and, but see, it's different now. It's crazy. They put the laces in the shoes for you. In our oh, generation, remember, this, the laces came in a box. You, you are right. You are right. When we right. were younger, yeah. uh, and we're remember, about the same age. Yeah. Yeah. We were younger, like the laces would come in a box, so we wouldn't want to take time. We put these on, and we're going out to show off our new sneakers. Rock and roll, baby. Huh? Come on, right in the box. Uh-oh. We don't do funky comedy now. No, 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 no. Check it out.